Few things in gardening are more exciting than starting a plant from seed, nurturing it, harvesting it, and eating it. You complete the entire cycle of life, and it really is quintessentially the experience of growing something in the garden. That's why in today's video, we're going over nine of the easiest crops to start from seed. Kevin Espiritu here from Epic Gardening, where it's my goal to help you grow a greener thumb. Now, you guys know I have not been shy about saying anyone who tells you you must start from seed to be a real gardener is kind of gatekeeping the art and science of gardening. You know, a lot of people who start gardening don't continue for a second year. It's quite a high percentage of people that just don't continue. And part of that is they made a mistake, they didn't get the results they wanted, and they just quit. So that's why I say, if you wanna go buy seedlings, go buy seedlings. But there are some really easy ones to grow from seed that can give you a lot of satisfaction. So we're gonna go through nine, plus some recommendations on varieties I think you might enjoy. So without further ado, cultivate that like button for epic seed starting, and let's get into the video. Crop number one, one of my favorites of all time, beans. Now beans kind of bifurcate into two different types. You have your bush beans, and then you have your pole beans. Bush beans, as the name implies, these ones right here are bush beans, dragon's tongue beans. They are a bushing habit, so they don't need a lot of support. In fact, they really don't need any support at all. So if you're growing in a container or you don't have a lot of vertical space, then bush beans are your go-to. Now, pole beans, as the name implies, they climb upwards and often need quite a bit of support, four, five, six feet or so, and they put out a ton of beans. When it comes to actually starting the seed, a lot of people will say you have to soak the seed. And that actually does help. That actually will speed up germination because beans have a nice hard seed coat that water has to get into before the life cycle of that bean can kind of kickstart and it can start germinating. That being said, you don't have to soak seeds. You can just put them in the ground in a nice moist soil and eventually that water will penetrate. The germination rate will be a little bit slower, but then you don't have to transplant it or anything like that. You can just put it right in the garden and let it grow. Now again, Dragon's Tongue, one of my absolute favorites. Contender is another one, and the world of beans is massive. So I have a full guide on my website with a ton of different varieties that you can check out. Next, we have cucumbers. Cucumbers is another large seed that germinates quite quickly, anywhere from four to eight days or so, and then rapidly grows. Now, much like beans, they actually do split into a bushing type and a climbing type, but naturally they are a climber and most varieties are climbing varieties. They have these little tendrils that will attach to whatever they're climbing up. So they have a built-in network to actually support themselves, which is beautiful. Now, this one is the classic. This is the one I'm growing the most of, Market More 76. It's a really big producer, but again, in the world of cucumbers, the varieties are almost endless. So you really do have to explore to find the one that you like. Number three, we have beets. Beets are really interesting because much like chard, they have this seed or what looks like a seed that's actually more of a compound seed. There's more than one seed within it. But again, it's a pretty large seed. It doesn't require soaking, although that will speed it up. And oftentimes you'll get more than one sprout coming out. So you might think that you have to plant more than one seed. Just plant one of them and you'll get a couple. Then you can thin them out and you're good to go. Now, the thing about beets that's interesting is a lot of people don't like the flavor. They say, oh, beets taste like dirt or blah, 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 they don't like it. I actually used to be in that camp myself. What I found is that, first of all, roasting beets is probably the best way to make them taste good, at least in my opinion. But the secret is the greens. Beet greens are actually really good. They're one of my favorite greens to eat now. And so when I harvest my beet root, I'll move that aside, wash it, dice it up and roast that. But then the beet greens, what I'll do is I'll chop those up and throw them in a pan with some olive oil, some onions and garlic, and I have a really nice saute that tastes absolutely delicious. For beets, you also have a different varieties. This is badger flame beet. You can use chiogia beets, which are a purple and white concentric circle on the interior. It looks absolutely beautiful. And there's a ton of variety in the beet family. Our next one is anything that is a brassica. So we're talking your broccolis, your cauliflowers, your kales, your collards, any of that is a really easy germinator. The seeds look the same. They're like these little black BBs. They germinate anywhere from three to seven days. And if you want the easiest ones to grow, then you're gonna wanna grow the ones that you don't have to form a crown with. So cauliflower and broccoli, you have to form this nice crown. You have to watch it and see how tight the florets are and all that stuff. But if you're growing kales, if you're growing mustards, all of those, you're eating the leaves. And so it's a quick germinator, easy to start, and also easy to harvest. 
Next, we have radishes. This one is a really cool one. This is called black Spanish radish, and it's probably the darkest exterior of a radish you're ever gonna see, but the interior is nice and white. I will say the flavor's not that good compared to other ones. If you want a nice flavor radish, maybe try something like French breakfast radish, or if you wanna go more to the Asian side, you can grow those giant daikon radishes. So radishes are, again, very quick germinator, anywhere from three to four days, and the crop itself is a fast grower. It's like 30, 35, 45 days or so. Obviously those big daikon radishes can grow a little bit longer, but huge, huge variety. I think I have more varieties of radish than I do any other plant. I just love to grow them. And as far as preparation, thinly slicing them and or roasting them, I find to be the best way to get the most flavor out of those radishes. Next, we have the peas. Now something you'll notice as far as seeds that are easy to start, they just so happen to be the seeds that we actually eat as the food of that plant, right? Beans, peas, one that's coming up a little bit later. So peas, here's my favorite variety that I currently grow, and it's the Desiree Dwarf Blauschocker pea. It doesn't require support. There are bush peas and there are pole varieties or vining varieties of peas, many more in that side. Most peas, you're gonna wanna support with some kind of teepee trellis or an arch or just any kind of support, but these guys don't really need it. They'll benefit from it, but they don't really need it. And they're this beautiful purple, purple color. Absolutely amazing. Bunch of different varieties of peas. And they're such a quintessentially spring crop that they should go in everyone's garden, I think. Next, we have summer squash. Although winter squash really falls into the same category as far as easy to start. The seeds, nice and large. They're quick germinators. And in this world, there's millions of varieties. And so you kind of have your patty pans, which look like little alien UFO saucers, and you can harvest those really young. I mean, you can harvest those when they're like one, two, three inches across, slice them in half, throw them in a pan, saute them up, and you get this nice nutty flavor that's really, really delicious. This one is the Jaune et Vert. There's no way I said that correctly, but a really cool variegated looking patty pan. But then you have the whole world of zucchinis in your summer squash. You have your crook neck squashes, which go like this, you know, with a little crooked neck. Then you have your straight neck squashes. So experiment with the variety that you want, but know that they're easy to grow from seed. Next, we have the whole world of lettuce. Lettuce, again, it's going to be a quick germinator, which all these seeds I've selected are quick germinators. But the other thing that's nice is the varieties are simply incredible. So here's your normal butter crunch lettuce, but two varieties that I really have enjoyed this year are little gem lettuce, which is like a small head lettuce, nice compact small head. You can just chop it, slice it in half. You have a nice wedge salad style approach. There's also another one called Lunix, which is this sort of loose leaf, almost metallic-esque red look to it that's absolutely delicious and beautiful. And then you have one that the market farmers really enjoy, which is called Salanova. The seeds on that one are really expensive, but it's probably one of the most beautiful, delicious lettuce you'll ever grow. Finally, we have the world of sunflowers. We actually have a flower, although it is a flower that you can eat. These seeds, a lot of people recommend soaking them, and that does speed germination up quite a bit because it's kind of an unusual seed, very hard seed coat that water does need to get through to start that process. Again, no seed needs soaking. It's just a recommended option. I see a lot of growers will go wrong where they over soak their seed, it starts to rot out, or they soak it and then they put it into too moist of an environment, and then it starts to mold out. And so if you wanna avoid that, just go ahead and direct sow it into nice moist soil. But again, it's not just yellow sunflowers here, guys. These guys are called Autumn Beauty, and they have this sort of reddish interior with yellow tips. There's one called Golden Bear that almost looks like a lion's mane mushroom. It's this crazy looking color. And then there's another one called Moulin Rouge, which is, as you might imagine, a nice, dark, deep, vibrant red. So sunflowers, both for edible and ornamental purposes, are a fantastic one to grow from seed. Again, growing plants from seed is truly one of the most rewarding parts to gardening, especially when you grow those hard to grow seeds. But these guys, these nine, should get you off to a really good start to get a couple wins under your belt this season, especially if it's your first year gardening. So you build that confidence to start going hard the next season and growing some epic stuff. So if you guys like this video, drop me a like, drop me a comment, say what's up. And until next time, good luck in the garden and keep on growing.